Hello everyone, and this will be a more hands-on video on how to uh, get started with Obsidian and PSQL, which is the Postgres client that we are going to use to connect to the Postgres database. So first of all, to, to be able to access uh, the CEDA database, you're going to require to have access to an SSH terminal. And uh, if you are using Mac or you are, you are using Linux, uh, that actually comes in handy because it's already installed by default. But uh, if you are using uh, Windows, then you're going to have to download a specific tool for that. One of the tools uh, that, uh, that is out there is called Pulti. That's the tool I actually recommend. But if you like to uh, use a different SSH thermal, there are a bunch of them out there. Stay free to do so. I will be recording a video on how to use Pulti on Windows. Just so you know, it's quite easy and smooth. So uh, I'm pretty sure you won't have any trouble, but in case you have, you can watch this video while we leave here uh, in the comments below. So let's get started. So uh, to start off, you have to SSH to your, uh, to our head node on Cedar. The way you do so is doing SSH at uh, your username at cedar.compute. Canada.ca. If your password is required, then you type a password there, and and then you are logging logged in into the server. And now, uh, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna issue a comment psql dash dash version which tells us that the version that our Postgres client that comes as a default is the version 9.6.6. Uh, .6. However, we, we would like to use the last version of uh, the Postgres client. So for doing so, it's required you execute the uh, module road Postgres SQL command. That will then, when you issue the version, uh, you may, uh, you're gonna see that now our Postgres clients is running on the version 12.1. Now, to avoid having to, uh, every time we log in to load modules, because modules is a comment that is a uh, session only uh, persistence. Uh, so as soon as you logged out, that comment will not persist. And uh, if you log in again, that means you have to issue the comment again. So in order to avoid uh, such steps, we can uh, basically include this module load possibly SQL on our bash RC, RC uh, file. So the way we do so is by using the we can uh, open our bash RC file. And then you can append this comment by the end of, of your bash RC uh, file. Uh, your file may just be entirely blank. I just happen to have a different uh, set of commands on my file. I advise you to append that in the very end, but it's totally up to you, whatever you'd like to add this comment here. Once you've added that, press uh, escape, then uh, then exit. Once you've exit, you just to do a test now, uh, I'll exit the Cedar console and then I'll log in again. And now I'll issue the PSQL version and you uh, you notice that now it's uh, by default using the last version. So that's the first thing. Now, there are several ways you could instruct our client in uh, where is the host we would like to connect. But uh, the way we're going to recommend here is to use environment variables. And uh, the client allows us to, to do so by using these two environment variables where you have PG host, which basically allows you to set up which host you'd like to connect. And you have, in addition to that, the B PG database that tells the uh, PC client which database is the target database we are connecting to. So to set that up and to make sure our uh, PC is working, we can. Uh, export this variable which carries the host name for our database server and then I can use this command here and as opposed to user here I have to set set my username which is the uh, my default uh, database uh, on Cedar and I have all set up 
when I use PC icon now, I've already get by default logged in on my table. But again, this is a session only comment because the export has to be re-executed every time I log in. And to avoid doing so, what I can also do is to export these variables on my BHRC. So I'll do so here, just so we have this recorded next time we log in and make sure we we don't have to do that every time we enter into Cedar. So you can do so by doing this. DB. And you save. And now let's do a test. Logged out, logging. And you issue PC code, it's here. So to do a test whether my database is working or not, I could create a table. And the table has been created. And uh, if I don't like to keep that table, I could just drop that table. And there we go, we have our database running and working and we are connected into our database. Next steps would be then to download our uh, workshop examples. So there are a bunch of nice and cool stuff there. And uh, let's get started on downloading that and using some of the examples we've been providing there. So in order to download a repository, then uh, what you one have to do is to, uh, the easiest way is to use git clone. So it basically requires you to do git clone on the repository path uh, that we then download the repository. Repository is a public repository, so everyone should be able to access into the repository, but if someone has uh, any issue, please uh, let us know and uh, we can uh, look after that. So once the repository is downloaded, you, you will notice that your home directory has now uh, a new folder called db underscore workshop to our project um, our examples name so navigate to db workshop slash postgres and then let's visualize some of uh, the prepared set of sql comments we we have here in order to uh, to create a table so can use either more or less both commands would work but yeah so this is our set of commands to create a table on our database and uh, the way you can inject that and you can tell uh, psql you would like to execute that on psql we only know to have this input at uh, directors operators that allow us to feed our programs and the way you can do so is by typing psql smaller than uh, operator and then I can tell uh, which file I like the PC code to execute commands. the way PC code will execute uh, the commands are internally uh, done on that file so basically what this file is doing here so we first uh, say drop table because if the table uh, we are targeting Canada underscore CD is already created. We then drop that table because we would like to create a new one. And then we create the table itself. And after that, we uh, we have the common copy which is issued for us, allow us to feed in the table with uh, some of the data we have under the file Canada slash CD dot text. So to see what we have on this file, let's take a look on that. You can type as Canada CD.txt, and we'll see that this file is a basic CSV file which basically contains information about Canada cities and uh, its GPS location. So, to compare and to take a look whether this file has been loaded on our uh, table, let's uh, connect to our database. And the way we can get to the console is at the Again, same way we've done before, psql. And then on our psql, we can type uh, select star and from. And the nice thing feature here is if you tap, if you tap 
tab on your uh, right side, you see that the table is already listed here. So if I say Canada City and uh, press tab, it will auto-complete that to me automatically. And if I put a semicolon here now, I'll be able to list the table I've just inserted on Cedar. And that's uh, that shows me the table has been loaded successfully and the GPS coordinate has been uh, loaded as well. So some additional comments we have here on our PC Pro client to which like to list if you do uh, backslash L, you'll see all, all the database that are listed under our uh, system. But there are plenty of them because you have uh, users. You won't be able to access database that are not owned by you, but uh, that's such a way you can uh, list database, da 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 database on your Postgres server. So to list tables, the command you can use is backslash, backslash D. D. You notice that the table you have uh, created is also listed here. It's a good way of you knowing uh, what tables are available for you to do selects against them. If you like to see the fields on a table, we can issue the command slash backslash t plus the name of the table, which in this case is Canada City. And again, uh, here you can press tab and will uh, autocomplete automatically matching the table it has available for you. And, uh, and then if you type enter, you'll be able to see the table. Sometimes the visualization doesn't get nice, but if you open up the window, you'll see, be able to see that table completely. And those are the tables and uh, the columns we have available for, for that table. Say, for instance, you would like to know uh, how many uh, rows you have on that table. Uh, one can issue a command, which is select count. Count is a function that basically will count all the records that has been retrieved uh, for, for a query. And then you say from Canada City. And then we'll see uh, 5,521 rows has been uh, re retrieved. Uh, exactly the same number of rows we've inserted before. Now, to leave the uh, PCPO command line, there are many different ways actually of doing so. You could do backslash quit or you could also do backslash kill. And there's uh, another way uh, I like to actually do is uh, if you press on your keyboard, Ctrl plus D, that it will also exit for you. Stay free to use whatever uh, means uh, works best for you. For now, let's just do uh, kit, quit, and uh, there we go. Uh, I left my our console. And thank you very much for watching uh, till here, and uh, I see you in the next video. Bye.